I love my dad. Uh, a lot of people tell me that your dad should have been a professor because he loves talking. What they don't understand is that both my father, earthly father and I, believe a lie that's partly truthful and partly not truthful. And, and I tell you the truth, <laughs> it's a funny play on words, is that the most powerful lies are the ones that start out in truth, but they get distorted. The belief that my father and I struggle with is that our value and our self-worth depends greatly on what we know. We love to tell people lots of facts and information. Yeah, it's showing off some. But ultimately what we're saying is, I want you to value me. I want you to value the words that I speak. I want you to just I want you to validate me that I'm worth something. And yet the lie is this is that beauty doesn't always consist on what we know. It consists primarily on who we know and who we are with and what we are being. Not so much what we are doing, but what we are being. For example, look at these trees. By themselves, beautiful. Together in unity, like this, extraordinary. Extraordinarily beautiful. By themselves, yeah, pretty. But together, amazing. And why is it amazing? Because they're in complete unity with each other. They're valuable. If one of them was missing out of this, it wouldn't look the same. The value comes from their unity, working together as one. Not one of them's trying to show off. If one of them did try to show off, it just wouldn't look right. So the value of these trees comes more from where they are, who they are with, and what are they being. Christ wants you to get your self-worth not on by what you know, but by who you know and who you are with. Now let me completely clarify that, meaning that the who you know is Him, and the who you are with is Him. There's no other person, no other thing. That's where you get your value from. So my brother or sister, if you're struggling with depression, thinking you're not worthy of anything, you're not valuable, you're right. You're not. You and yourself, no, nah, you're not. You and Christ, extremely valuable. So if you want to have self-worth, if you want to have value, it comes from having a relationship with Him, walking with Him. And it starts first and foremost listening to the thoughts that are in your head are they the truth are they do they bring life are they the direction in a way that you know God absolutely wants you to go if they're not then they're not from him you need to throw them in the trash can when you hear this voice that says you're not good enough say I agree thank God I am amazing when I'm in Christ. Uh, you're never going to. You're right, I'm never going to. But when I'm in Christ, all things are possible. See, my worth isn't based on what I'm going to do or what I'm going to say. My worth comes from what I do as a result of being with Him. I don't know about you, but when I've been in the presence of the Lord, I can do and say things 
that are absolutely amazing that I can't even believe they're coming out of my mouth because they didn't come from me. But when I have not spent time with the Lord and I'm not walking in His presence, the full awareness of His presence and monitoring those thoughts and visions and dreams and imaginations, when I'm not monitoring those and listening to what's being said to me and just going off of my bare instinct and by going off of, of what I think I should do, then I'm never... I'm never going to do this. I'm never going to amount to anything. I'm not good enough. I'm horrible. Just go down the bad list of all the bad things you can say about yourself. And they're partly rooted in truth and partly rooted in a lie. The truth is, without Christ walking beside us and in us and upon us, all these dreams and visions that we have for ourselves that He has planted inside of us are just going to be frustrating, irritating, and horrible because you cannot serve two masters. The scripture says you'll hate one and love the other. And it, until I'm completely relying on His Spirit to guide me and direct me, until I'm relying on His wisdom and not mine, these dreams and vision that He has planted inside me will be a curse and a frustration. And I see that also within my own daughter. I see this paradox where if I know she's with me and for me, I can bless her, I can be patient with her, I can teach her, I can coach her, I can walk beside her. But when she gets in this funk, when, when her attitude is, I'm not with you. Her attitude is, I don't want to learn. Her attitude is just horrible. I have to pull out the stern and severe daddy voice and I don't like that voice I don't like that person she doesn't like that person and yet our Heavenly Father is like that too he is gentle he is patient he is kind but he is also severe and he is strict for those who are against him and not for him he has planted dreams and visions that only he can accomplish and He's planted those inside of you. And if you try to do them on your own, you're going to find yourself severely frustrated. And that dream and passion can turn into a curse and not a blessing. And yet it's the dream and passion you're pursuing, you think it's a good thing because God planted it inside of you. But if you're not walking with Him and let Him guide the steps, I'm sorry, my friend. I'm sorry. You cannot just go on marching orders. It is a relationship where you walk with God and you never walk without Him. So my encouragement to you is if you find yourself failing in the dreams and vision that God has called you to do, if you find yourself depressed, if you find yourself bored, if you find yourself anywhere where God is not called you to be right now, there is hope. Scripture says, repent. That means turn around. Go the other direction. It's not that easy, Dustin. I know it's not that easy. I didn't say it was easy, but it is very simple. But with Him leading you, it's exciting. And it is amazing.